Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you some neat tricks for very accurately placing insert meshes onto geometry. In this particular instance I'll be adding stitches to the sole of this shoe and to the upper part. ZBrush has many tools for doing this. I could very easily just sculpt the stitches onto the shoe but for accuracy and versatility I want to use an insert mesh instead. For those of you who don't know me, which is probably almost everyone out there, my name is Dylan and I live in Ireland. The first thing I am going to do is duplicate the shoe and I'm going to work on the duplicate, duplicate and hide the original shoe. Here I'm going to subdivide the duplicate a couple of times just to get a smoother mesh for masking. Initially I need to make sure that the duplicated shoe is a single polygroup so that my stitches don't get applied around old or pre-existing polygroups. As you can see the little eyelets around the laces are a separate polygroup so I'll click Control plus W to make the whole shoe into a single polygroup. Shift plus F again to get us out of polygroup view. I want to use the mask curve brush to draw out the areas for masking and making into new polygroups. This video is in response to a request by Jan over at the HiveWire3D.com forum. So, hi Jan! <laughs> Tapping on the Alt key allows me to get the curve and just bring up the mask out to the edge and release. And in polygroups view, you can see I now have two polygroups, the lighter one on the sole and the original one on the upper part of the shoe. On the upper part of the shoe, I want to make the toe area a separate polygroup. Holding Ctrl and Shift and clicking on the shoe upper will isolate it from the rest of the mesh. Then I can draw out the mask line and holding down the spacebar, drag it across where I want it to be. Ctrl plus W will make the mask area into a new polygroup. And then on a blank area of the canvas, Control, Shift and click will bring everything back visible. Now I have three polygroups and the whole idea of this is that I will have stitches along the borders of each of those polygroups. The next step is to crease the borders between the polygroups. Crease can be found in the geometry palette and I'm going to choose crease polygroups. Now this will add a crease along the polygroup borders. Now just watch closely, you can see the way it happened there. Now I'll just zoom in a bit and undo that and redo it so you can see it again. See that? You can see the crease that's been added. Next I will mask the creased area so we go down to the masking palette and scroll down to mask by features now you can use groups or crease either works but i find crease is a little bit better so with crease selected here click mask by features and this masks the creased area we made now it doesn't look very neat but don't worry this this actually works Now 
Next I'm going to load up the insert mesh brush that I need which will be the stitches and clicking comma brings up light box and then click on brush and then click the insert folder and wade through all these insert meshes and find a stitch that you like now the stitch that I'm going to use I can't remember if it came with ZBrush when I bought it or if I got it free over on the ZBrush forum so this is the one I want to use so I'm going to post up the link you should see it come up in a minute and that will tell you where to get all the free insert mesh brushes now for the magic part clicking on the stroke menu and scrolling down to curve functions and here where it says frame mesh creased edges and you can see what that did it inserted a frame all along the creased edges we made earlier clicking on the line inserts the stitches these are too big so we'll go again reduce the draw size and yep that looks a lot better that's not too bad at all once I'm happy with that I click on the main mesh to commit the stitches and now I want to split them out into their own sub tool and I click on hide part to do that now I have a custom set up here so you will find the hide part in visibility click that and it hides all unmasked part of the mesh in other words your new stitches and we have a split hidden function and you will find that in the sub tool menu and go to split and split hidden and watch up here what it does is it splits those stitches into their own sub tool and there we go at this point I don't need the duplicated shoe anymore so I can delete that and delete click delete yes thank you very much and now you can see the stitches so we're left with the new generated stitches and our original shoe and there we have them both visible because these stitches are still their own sub tool I could probably move them about and tweak them get them looking a bit neater across the toe area where they're crooked but as it's getting late and it's only a tutorial I'm not going to bother I've merged them down and this is all now one sub tool the poly groups have been retained as you can see This wraps up the first part of the video. In the next part of the video I'll show you how to use the slice curve brush to get the same result. Hello again and welcome to part 2 of this video. Back to our original shoe again and I'm going to duplicate it again and I'll hide the original one and work on the duplicate again I'm going to merge the eyelets and the shoe into the same polygroup hitting B on the keyboard to bring up the brushes and S to bring up the slice curve this time I didn't subdivide the mesh because as you'll see the slice curve generates extremely sharp borders between body poly groups I almost said body groups it's probably not a great idea making these videos so late at night tapping on alt allows me to get the curve or bend in the line 
and that should do it. Now for a new polygroup across the front of the toe and as you can see it also made a new polygroup right down here so I'll merge these two Control shift and click on one of these then mask it then control shift click on the other one and with both of these masked control W makes them into one polygroup as in the first part of the video we now have three separate polygroups but as you can see the borders between each one are much sharper once again I'm going to use crease which can be found in the geometry menu and crease polygroups you can see what it does there and I'll zoom in again and do an undo and a redo and that's our creased polygroups creased, creased borders between polygroups and once again it's down to the masking menu mask by features and select increase and once again while the mask looks terrible this is going to work out really well bringing up light box and navigating to the insert brushes the, sorry the insert mesh folder and scrolling all the way down and there we have it the same stitches from as last time and in stroke and curve functions keep creased edges selected and hit the frame mesh and as you can see that's a very neat frame mesh Clicking on the line will insert the stitches and they're probably a little bit too small. Yes, I think I want to go a little bit bigger so I'll undo that and increase the draw size and try again. And I think they may be too big so I'll undo and just try again and that looks a little bit better. There's a wee problem on the top of the shoe where the stitches aren't quite visible where they join the stitches on the side so I may play with the brush settings on this I'll show you how to do that now in the brush menu at the top you click on depth and you can see this is the brush here you can drag it up or down so that dragging it down makes it sit further into the mesh so we'll just try that and see what happens now as you can see that's too far into the mesh we need to bring it out a bit more so we try again and move the brush up off the surface of the mesh a little bit and try again and yes you can see in the toe area there where the final stitch is now visible so I'll probably accept that clicking on the main mesh commits the insert mesh brush and the lines disappear once again I want to separate the stitches into their own sub tool so to do that I click on hide part this hides the unmasked part of the mesh and in other words your stitches and now I want to split hidden and that gives us the stitches as a separate sub tool because the stitches are a separate sub tool I can edit them I can move them out a little bit tweak them where needed once I have everything done I can merge them down onto the original shoe and get rid of the duplicate 
and that's really all there is to it i hope you learned something from this and found it useful thanks very much for watching